Hello and welcome back to our overview of the QVR Pro software from QNAP. Do make sure you watch part one of this video before moving on to part two now, because a lot of the information is gonna be re back referred to that video. But nevertheless, now we're looking at the client because, and I'm sorry to break this to you, the one thing about QVR Pro that did annoy me, because I'm really enjoying QVR Pro software, the one thing that really let me down is the lack of browser support. First and foremost, if you are thinking of getting this program and browser support is very, very important to you, this is something to take on board because the QVR Pro client software is the only way in which you're gonna be able to really access your surveillance footage. So you're gonna to have to utilize a Windows PC, a, Win uh, a Mac, a Linux-based PC, your mobile phone, any of these different things. There are a host of applications and this is why it's considered an enterprise level product. But the downside of that is if you are gonna try to utilize this software and use a web browser like here, you are not gonna be able to access the live recording and the cameras. What you need to do is uh, click on the QVR Pro client app here and then what happens is a pop-up, which you're not gonna see now because I've already pre-installed it, will pop up on your machine saying that you can download the QVR Pro client to any one of your localized machines. So in the case here, we're looking at the QVR Pro client um, for Windows, which I've installed. If I was using a Mac, there's a Mac client, there's one for Android on your phone, there's one for iOS, one for OS X, there's all of them. But you are gonna have to use a local client to view your cameras, so do bear that in mind. Now, you can stream recordings here. This is a little pop-up you always get, um, recording streams. You can see and view live and recorded footage simultaneously. You can drag individual cameras and create your own bespoke control deck. And you can create zonal areas of monitoring, which we're gonna try and do in today's video. But here's our desktop interface here. And what I'm gonna do is slightly squeeze it down because the recording area is not quite small enough. So we're gonna put that there. And here is our user interface for QVR Pro, the Windows client. So here's our interface, it's very clean, very easy, a great deal cleaner and easier than that of Surveillance Station. And we'll go for the outside option straight away. We've got everything here, giving us system information about the NAS we're using. We can search just like we could before, and this lets us search all the recordings. So not the whole NAS, just the recordings. Here is where we can full screen it, but we're not gonna do that because we're obviously watching it. We can control the volume, that's from the cameras and the, the app itself. Here's our alerts and notifications of our cameras. And there is the settings for the software. Now these settings apply to the local client software more than the NAS itself. So you can obviously remove channels, add channels. You can have it running in the background on your PC and get general alerts and the toolbar and kind of bespoke changes to the user interface. The alert is where you want to have sounds and notifications. So if we enable some of these, and some of these notifications will happen when some of the triggered alerts happen on our cameras. Emaps is if we want to upload a digital map of our area and then assign cameras to that 3D, um, sorry, that 2D outline blueprint of the areas the cameras are in. But you will need to get emaps um, from a third party. QNAP don't provide those emaps. And snapshots is obviously if you want to do a quick snapshot of something to the local PC. These are where these pictures be saved. So let's save them in the pictures folder. And then that way, if we want to just quickly click, we can have those um, recording, uh, those instant snapshots from those cameras recorded to your local machine. You can also keep timestamps and of course the channels of which the camera that took it. So that way you can get a better understanding if you name a camera rear garden, the rear garden stamp will be on those and the timestamp. And obviously you can change things with regard to your localized machine and hopefully none of these will affect the recording quality as we go through this video. So from this interface, what we can see is all of our cameras that we added in the previous video. Now we can double click these if we like, and then just see each of the individual cameras. There we are in that front room there. Move to the other camera, and that's in the same side of that same room, and we can flick to the USB camera we've got connected. Once again, there's little Richie, there's Pay and a whole host of them, there's my, one of my many desks over there. So what if we want to look at multiple cameras at once? Well, let's do that then. Let's look at two cameras. So now we're gonna to connect to two cameras simultaneously, and these are the two cameras in the same room. Alternatively, that was just for five secs, because what you can do is switch to just seeing multiple cameras for a given length of time. So say we want to do 10 seconds of looking at all three cameras. So 
for 10 seconds, we are now going to view these three cameras quite easily. And straight away, it's nice to be able to have this live control deck. One thing I will say is this does let you flick between different control decks considerably quicker than that of other surveillance platforms. Only really Milestone gives you this level of speed between flicking between different cameras. And of course, each camera can be controlled if they have it. So the USB camera is not mounted on any kind of tripod. So it doesn't have pan, tilt, zoom. It doesn't have the ability to have control. But these two axis cameras, on the other hand, and if you look at camera two, you can see the camera there that's recording in the first window. It's nice to be able to be um, have an element of control. So let's try it out, shall we? The PTZ controls here. We can go to click and go. So we can start moving cameras just by clicking on them as we see fit. So we move that one out and start moving our camera around. And we're already moving it. Move it back there. And we can use pan, tilt, zoom controls already embedded in the device to utilize and rotate our cameras as needed. And again, we can use that to zoom into things. And there's a slight lag there, I think. And as we can see, the zoom quality is insane there while I'm looking at brickwork. So we're just gonna let that camera rotate around and make our way back to the original position. And I don't know if you can see on the right camera there, if we zoom in, so we use our zoom. Zoom in a little bit, zoom in a little bit more. Use pan, tilt, zoom controls. And then make our way over to that other camera. We have to zoom out a little bit more to show these cameras in use. Zoom out a little bit. So again, the pan tilt zoom controls are really dependent more on the camera. And as these are quite enterprise level cameras, they are incredibly sensitive and are recommended that you use the um, remote control stick that arrives with it. But right now, all three of these cameras are recording in real time. If we look through some of the settings of these, we've obviously got the options we've looked at with the preset points, or we can go, but all of the cameras will have a designated home point, and the home point there of that camera is there, which is incredibly unhelpful. Whereas this camera here, this home point, let's go for what this one calls its home point, shall we? Ah, someone's already been playing with this camera. Okay, let's go back to desk. And this is obviously where we've been playing with the camera in a different location. And again, we can change the focus of these cameras and all of that is included quite well all the time while these other ones are being recorded. If we go over to here, this is where we can do um, camera audio notifications in and out. So right now we can set it up that any notifications and loud stuff that I say will come straight through to the camera and we can disable that as needed. If we move over, we can look at the other settings too, and we can disable the zoom going on on that camera as well. We can full screen that, we can set a region of interest, and in this, this is where we can choose one specific area that we want to monitor as a completely separate feed, which is quite a neat little feature when you think about it, because what we, sometimes what you want to focus on is just a set area of the recorded footage. So say we want to record just this doorway, and that's what we'll do. We will record just that zonal doorway right now, and we will focus on just there, and there we have it. Unfortunately, that still is only gonna be in that dippy seven seconds rule. But unfortunately, this is something we're gonna to have to add over time. And there we have now a door being monitored in that window, and if we go for this one here, we're going to freak out our little friend Richard here, and we are literally just going to focus on him. We're going to pop that down there, and now we've got our focus point where we're monitoring one person at once. And again, all of that we set up very quickly. It should be mentioned that if there's any issues here, it's because I've never done that before, but it is very intuitive. I've got to give it that. And remember, all of these can have their own area of control of the overall camera. Obviously, we can't move too much within that area, but what we can do is take a look at this area, this guy, and now we've got a picture of this guy, and then we can fire him if we so choose. I hope you're listening to this video in the future, Richie. Always a pleasure. So again, lots of stuff we can do. We can keep that or we can remove it. We can change the aspect ratio, which is quite nice, and we're gonna give Richie a little bit of privacy. At the same time, we're gonna disable that and move back 
to our original camera database. Now again, each of the cameras have their own options. In the case of those access cameras, as mentioned earlier on, what we can do is enable different kinds of recording patterns because there are different streamings with that camera. But once again, this is very much dedicated to those individual cameras. And again, we can flick between individual views, all the individual views we created earlier on, and all of them are available. So we can come up with different profiles for different areas. So say you've got a home and you want to have different profiles for holiday, for when you're at work or when you're at home, or at night when you're asleep, these are all options that are open to you. If you look at the bottom here, you may have noticed during the course of our recording that all of these um, areas have been recorded. All of the different um, time management and all the alerts that have been created have been triggering stuff. So here, for example, we can now look at the recordings of those cameras. So right now, while these cameras on the right-hand side are still recording, this one on the right is showing us something that's happened in the past. So again, we can go back to this camera, we can let that one return to the fold, and let it go back to what it was doing. So we'll get rid of that, we'll go back to the original view, and there's our three cameras. We're going to reconnect to that camera, we're going to zoom out a little bit, I think, and see if we can remember how to remove the zoom. Go through there, go back to our pan tilt zoom, bring it down a little, rotate down, and there's our going back to our room. But it's just, it's quite nice the ability to go back to our USB camera down here, and now we can start looking at the recordings. So from this camera, we are now going to go back in time, and while those other two are recording in real time, we're going to go back to our good friend Richie here while he was on the phone. And if ever he needs to prove that he's actually going to do a day's work, this is where we prove that he does his job, which is always nice to hear. Um, and again, same goes for up here. If there's been any alerts during the course of that recording and the time that we've had our cameras created, we can go back to those events in all the time that we've had our camera up and running. You may even find me at one point walking in front of that camera. And all the time, that ca all three cameras can still be monitored in real time. As you can see, it's still going through there. And we can revert that camera back to the present. And here we're going back live. So again, that's one of the many ways in which you can view your recordings. Now, maybe you want to focus just on playback. And this is going to show all the recordings and all the events that have transpired on one of these cameras. So this camera originally, on the left, was in the office in the dead of night. So this is when that camera's playing from. It's playing from, um, uh, I think, 10 p.m., I believe that is. It might be 10 a.m. So look, know what I'm saying. Look at the right one. This is just after midnight to this morning. Now, what we can do while we're looking at that camera is we can skip forward to different frames or different events. And then what that'll do is when something triggered a camera event, in the case of this camera, if light moved in front of the camera, if a van moved in front of the window, if there was a braking, this will skip to different events. There's me arriving in that office this morning. There'll be more events about people arriving too. And it will skip forward through all of the events. There's me on my mobile phone being incredibly lazy. And in case you're wondering, that was at 10 to 9 this morning, having a little sip of my big fat coffee. So do you know what we're going to do? Just because we've shown up Richie, I think it's only fair that we give a good focal point on Robbie there. And why don't we focus on a specific area? Move there, double click, zoom in. And we can zoom in to this happening in real time because I walked in front of that camera while it was working. And because I make lots of motion there, flicking through my phone like a like, lazy bugger, we're seeing lots of different instances of that recorded footage in real time. And again, we can skip forward five minutes. As we can see, more people should arrive and we're having a discussion about different recording software and different attributes of hardware and software. So what I'll do is, well, I think we've invaded people's privacy more than enough there, haven't we? Let's make our way back to the recordings because the whole time we've been talking, remember, these recordings have been taking place. So all of those cameras, and there's my colleague Richard making his way through the building there. And what we'll do is we'll sit, we don't know if how long it's going to take for him to move there, but what we're going to do is we're going to create a recording area on there so we can monitor him coming back through that doorway. And I've got to learn about the sensitivity 
of these controls. What am I doing wrong? How super annoying is that one? Move that back. We shall carry on looking at our recordings. There it is, Richie. Do you know what? We missed a trick. We missed a trick on him this time. But carrying on. At the bottom right there, we can obviously go through different uh, timelines and look at things in a different way. On top of that, we can zoom in and out of the timeline to get a better understanding of the timeline there. And this is so much more user-friendly than that of Surveillance Station, which we will be doing a comparison of in due course. We can focus in and out of those points. And if we had stuff like um, the EMAP enabled or flicking between those preset points like we did with the previous camera. So this camera here should have had multiple preset points we can flick between them. And of course, if we were using uh, the home position like that, that is what will happen. So if we flick to the home position on that, the camera more than likely will respond to that home if we'd programmed one, of course. Now, carrying on, if we remove some of these cameras, let's focus on just the one camera for now. Looking at this bad boy here, we can look at all the different options pertaining to that um, um, one camera because we want to keep that live panel for different recordings and to control our camera. So if, if it is a camera where the pan, tilt, zoom can be modified to work diagonally, this camera will enable that functionality. We haven't moved, there is actually a globe there. And we're not Bond villains, but it's nice to have one there. And of course, once again, we can come up with that ability to zoom over certain areas. I'm not gonna give up. I know this software is gonna let me do this. And there we have our zonal area. So again, we're monitoring this one area here, and hopefully someone will come through that door during the course of this recording. But what we can also do is set alerts up for these. So why don't we set up an alert now utilizing it. I'm saying this motion detection has already corresponded when Richie walked in front of the zonal area we created. Unfortunately, that sod already left. Now again, that was a snapshot, but what we can do is switch over to the video recording of when he broke that line of sight. And what I'll do is it will now flick to that recording pattern that we created of someone that's just gone into this device. It's happening in real time. And there's our breaking. Unfortunately, because we only set it roughly to about 10 to 15 seconds, we may not capture his return into the frame. So let's have a quick look. That's me playing with the camera, of course. Did we catch Richie breaking into the business he works with him? And there he is. We've caught him, hook, line, and sinker. Arrest that man. Go back to those live views that we created earlier on. And here we are back on the live control that we've created. Move that back to that area. And there we are back on the door. Maybe put this camera back in a little bit more of a usable position. Put that there, pan tilt zoom controls. Just move that across there a little bit. And again, those are the basic controls. But of course, if we go to the bottom right, we can get far, far more sophisticated control systems per camera that will allow us to rotate in a far more controllable manner as well as zooming in and out. So again, you don't have to rely on those. They're very basic. Always utilize the controls on the bottom right. Now, that's enough really for the QVR Pro um, client software. Uh, the alert system, there's been lots of alerts and recordings made during that time that we've been on this. And now for the next video, I'm going to switch over to the mobile phone application. So see you there.